We were more like brothers looking out for each other, hung together through thick and thin. You gotta have a wingman. Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? The Foul Life Podcast. This is another episode of Yukonuba Duck Dogs. It's just me by my lonesome solo. Hope y'all don't mind that. I know usually on these Duck Dog podcasts, we got Chris Aiken or we got Brad Arrington or or we got, you know, anybody that works for Yukonuba like Jake Terry and so many trainers across the country. Andrew up at Wild Acre, you've heard him right here on the Foul Life podcast, specifically the Yukonuba Duck Dog series. We're so excited to talk about Axel, my Axel, born and raised in Florida and Georgia. And now we're selling his sperm and we're breeding him. He's three and a half, almost four years old. And he picked up well over 800 birds this year. And that's on TV hunts, TV hunts. And he's just not even in his prime, but what Lee Howard, what Brad Arrington, what Miss Ellen and everybody, the entire crew at Mossy Pond Retrievers in Georgia did with Axel to get him ready. When they delivered him to me last August, I got a little nervous. I'm like, I'm going to be handling a dog and hosting a TV show and this and that and the ups and downs. And this is a dog that you cannot help but look at and go, oh my gosh, you're so easy. You're turnkey, man. They gave him to me. Here's what you do. Here's the handles. Here's the whistles. Here's the commands. You can't help but fall in love with this dog. His personality, his disposition, he's unbelievable. He's so chill. He's so chill when he puts his head in your lap on the couch or he's laying on his dog bed. But when, dog bed, but when he turns that switch, it's like Lincoln Hawk. If y'all don't know who Lincoln Hawk is, look up the movie Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone. Lincoln Hawk, when he talks about turning that baseball cap, that trucker cap, that netted, puffy, foam trucker hat around, it's like turning on his engine. Then he goes to work. He was the one of the littlest guys on the arm wrestling circuit, but he put it down. And Axel is not a very big dog, 60 pounds, anywhere from 57 to 65 pounds depending on if I let him get lazy a little bit, but he is a rocket man like Elton John sang about, and he gets after it. And the season was amazing. We went on our first hunt the weekend of October 3rd, California, early season goose. The first shot he broke, and I'm like, this dog is a master hunter, a hunter retriever champion, and it doesn't matter. His, he was so fired up. His adrenaline was through the roof. He made a little mistake, and that was it. There was probably three ticks I had to give him on the dog trick collar all season. This dog just got it. He's a happy dog. You can Nuba. I'm not BSing you. You can Nuba is a happy dog's food. They are happy knowing that they get to eat that stuff every day. The diet is unbelievable. The benefits and the science and the biological research behind it are, are, are tops, best in the industry by far. You think Chris Aiken would be feeding you Canuba if it wasn't the best? The dude has got 200 dogs in his kennel at any given time. Brad Arrington's got 160 dogs at Mossy Pond. I know that Andrew's got 45 dogs up at Wild Acre in Minnesota right now. Do you think that they would be feeding anything other than you Canuba if it was better than you Canuba? Of course they would. They wouldn't be feeding you Canuba if it wasn't the best for these dogs. It's the absolute best, and it's happy dogs. I look at Axel, and he's happy. My other dog, Duff, just got back here from Wild Acres. He's happy. He's fired up. They love each other. We're a little sad because at the end of this month, I'm taking the cross-country trek across this great country of ours, the United States of America, to bring Axel back to Georgia. He's going back on the trailer. It's going back to boot camp. Lee and, 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 and Brad are going to take him to another level in super retriever series and hunt tests and field trials. And I couldn't be happier. He's, I'm going to be sad. I'm going to shed tears. My daughter Alyssa is going to cry her eyes out. She's so upset with me that I'm letting him go back or that I'm making him go back or that I'm taking him back. And I, I just have to. We owe it to him, and I want that sucker to be the best that he can be. And it's a, it's a necessity that – We do what it takes to get our dogs to the level that they want to be at. I think that Axel has the desire to be the best. I could see it in his eyes. And his training so far shows me that more training is just going to be beneficial for him. So, yes, we will shed some tears, but I'm excited. But to see what he did in swimming conditions, flooded rice field conditions, dry field conditions, river systems, ocean conditions, San Francisco Bay conditions, big waves, twos and threes waves, going out and putting a whole, his mouth around a big Drake bull canvas back and coming back in that salt water and seeing him fight that current in those waves seen him fight the current in the sacramento river and different places that we hunted on the oregon california border in northern california just a stud breaking ice running across ice 
he's like an, any other dog. I get it. They're going to do whatever they need to do to make their handler happy, to make their owner happy, to make their family happy. But he's just such a cool dog. He's a happy dog. And I owe a lot of that to you, Canuba. I truly, truly do. Because every time I look at him, he's smiling. He just wants you to pet his belly, pet his forehead, and let him go to work. He'll sit idle. But when you open that door, you ought to see the way this dog reacts when you walk up to the door or the Lear camper shell and pop that back lid and let down the tailgate. He is literally standing up on his back legs. He looks like a stallion getting ready to fight. He looks like a Rocky Mountain sheep rearing up on his back legs to lay the hammer down with those curls onto another ram during the rut. Like he is ready to go. He doesn't bark. He doesn't whimper. He doesn't squeal. He doesn't make a peep. He might make a little peep and a squeaky bark when you're letting him out of the kennel, kennel just because he's so excited. But you don't even know he's there. He is that dog that you fall in love with. I sleep with this dog in the spoon position several nights a week. Does that sound weird? Maybe, but he's not under the covers. Don't think like that, but he's by me cuddled up like my buddy. And when we wake up, he's still right there, ready to roll. And isn't it amazing how a dog could be in a deep sleep? It doesn't matter if it's a 10 minute nap or an eight hour all nighter how fast they're ready to go. Could you imagine if humans could do that without coffee? We can't even do it with coffee or Red Bull. We can't. We roll out. We got to wash our face. I mean, we get excited, but we got to shower up. We got to shave. We got to get that, like I said, that caffeine rolling in us. We got to get that fresh air. That dog will literally bounce up and be ready to rock with no sleep in his eyes at all. And if there is, we wipe it out and we go to work. And that's what Axel has allowed me to do is just become this handler that I have confidence. And I would send Brad a video, a picture. I'd send Lee a text say, this is what he's doing. They're like, right on, man. They just let me do my thing with them. That's their confidence in me, our team, our crew, and Axel. I'm sure he's going to have to go back and, you know, rewind a little bit and get get maintenance on a couple of his handles or a couple of his marks and a couple of his drills. But that's normal. That's every day in the dog business and the kennel business and the training sporting dog, duck dog business. And I just wanted to make sure that people understood how infatuated I am with this dog. I'm on a different level of love with him. And I admit it. I love Duff. I love Waylon. I love Slash. Um, we got another dog coming soon that we're going to name Izzy, another black lab. I love Axel so much. If you're wondering about the names, yes, Axel, Izzy, Slash, Duff. Duff was the basis of Guns N' Roses. Slash, the lead guitarist. Um, Izzy, who we're getting pretty soon, was the rhythm guitarist of the original GNR lineup. And Axel is the best lead singer of all time. We just need another yellow lab in the future, and we'll name him Stevie. We'll have the whole lineup, 1985 to about 1990 of the Guns N' Roses, best band of all time. So that's the names. But again, man, just how happy Axel is. And if you're around him, everybody that's been around him, from Rocky to Ty to Clay to Clint, everybody that is in camp with us, Riley, Rico, they're Bailey, they're singing. They're like, man, he's just happy. He's just a cool dog. They love Axel. You don't have to discipline him. We discipline him some. He'll get off track a little bit here and there, but not much. He's just that perfect kid, that perfect dog. And we're fired up for him. We're happy for him. We love how happy he is. And that's what Brad Arrington says, that when you go to Mossy Pond, their dogs are, they're disciplined, but first and foremost, they're happy. And that's another reason why they feed you Canuba, because it makes them happy. It gets them excited. They eat with reckless abandon. Like they get in there and they eat and they're ready to go back to work. Again, we don't eat them, you know, get them fed and then run them on a heavy stomach. We don't do that. If you've listened to the Duck Dogs podcast here at The Foul Life, you've heard veterinarians talk about, you know, we, we've talked to several, like Ira and McCauley has told you, don't hunt them on a full stomach. Feed them after the hunt. Don't let them have that high intensive activity, high intensity activity on a full stomach. And it's just like being a human being. You don't drink a ton of water, eat a ton of food, and then go do a workout. It's not good for your internal system, your digestive system, your guts, your innards, your intestines. It's not good for it. So don't do it to the dog. And we, uh, we just see a huge difference in you, Canuba. And now we're going on year number three with them. And are you kidding me? This stuff is awesome. We're so excited about it and what they stand for in the hunting and duck dog community, how they support our culture and our lifestyle. And Axel's walking, running, swimming, retrieving, absolutely badass machine of a dog proof that you can is the best food in the world. Man, nobody will ever, ever change my mind on that. And I wish y'all could just hang out with him for one hunt, one afternoon, one boat ride, one truck ride, just to see how cool he is. That's Axel. That's Yukonuba. That's Duck Dogs. 
We're going to have some upcoming guests that are going to be awesome for you all to listen to. We'll have Brad Arrington back on here to give us an update. We are going to be doing those podcasts live from the Mossy Pond Lodge and Resort. I mean, this guy's built a resort. We're going to be doing it live from his property and headquarters in Georgia in the next month. So look for those coming. We got Andrew coming out in May to the studio to drop some tips for the Foul Life TV, our social media, and lay down some podcasts for Yukonuba Duck Dogs right here at the Foul Life. Get on the Yukonuba Sports Diet, the Work Diet. Look at all their different diets. Get the one that's right for your dog, female, male, puppy, young, old, all life. Get Yukonuba in their mouth. You're not going to regret it. I'm Chad Belding. This has been another episode of Yukonuba Duck Dogs. We'll be back at you with another one soon. Thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to the Foul Life Podcast. Tom, Jake, hit that button. This is 2AM Logic. The song is called My Foul Life.